What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with another fractions lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about subtracting mixed numbers with no regrouping. So let's split it open and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to subtract mixed numbers with no regrouping by lining them up vertically. We're going to do two review problems uh, that review skills that we've done in previous videos, if you've been following along with our fraction uh, playlist. And then we're going to combine those skills to help us today. So first of all, subtracting fractions using the algorithm. So if I have 6 twelfths minus 2 twelfths, I know when I'm subtracting uh, fractions or mixed numbers, the denominators have to be the same, which they are. And when you do that, 6 minus 2 is 4, and then your denominator stays the same. When you solve 6 twelfths minus 2 twelfths, your answer is 4 twelfths. And then you can even simplify that into 1 third. If you don't know how to simplify, don't worry about it. That's not the point of this video, but we always just want to make sure we show that skill. That's what we did in our subtracting fractions lesson. Now let's take a look at another skill we learned in a previous lesson, how to add mixed numbers. Again, our denominators are already the same. When we add mixed numbers, all we do is we line them up vertically. We're going to circle our numerators and we're going to add those. 2 plus 1 is 3. My denominator stays the same. And then all I do is I add my whole numbers. And the sum of 3 and 2 fourths plus 2 and 1 fourths is 5 and 3 fourths. So if we have 3 and 2 fourths and 2 and 1 fourths and we wanted to add them, that's how we teach you to solve it, right? We line it up vertically, we add the fractions and the whole numbers. If that was how we added 3 and 2 fourths and 2 and 1 fourths, how would we subtract them, right? So we have the same mixed numbers, but now we want to subtract them. I have an idea, and I think it's going to be pretty similar to what we just did when we added them. So let's take a look at the steps for how we are going to subtract mixed numbers in this video and then come back and solve this. All right, our steps when subtracting mixed numbers. Step number one, we're going to line up the whole numbers and fractions and circle the numerators. Sounds exactly like what we did when we did adding mixed numbers. Step number two, we're going to subtract the numerators. Step number three, we're going to ask ourselves this question when we do that, though. Is there more on the floor? If there is, go next door and get one more. Just like our subtracting mix number song says. One, two, three. More on the top, no need to stop. More on the floor and go next door and get one more. Yeah, more on the top, no need to stop. More on the floor and go next door and get one more, yeah. Wow, the pipes on that guy. Wow, fantastic. Thank you. And then our last step is we are going to subtract the whole numbers. Those are our steps. Very, very similar to when we added, except we have to, when we subtract, make sure that we don't have more on the floor. Because if we do, we need to go next door and regroup, just like we would do with whole numbers, except because it's fractions, we're going to get one more. We're not doing that today because today's only practicing subtracting mixed numbers without regrouping. If you want to get into that, take a look at our subtracting mixed numbers with regrouping lesson where we cover how to use step number three. All right, back to this question, right? So now we are going to follow our steps. You can see them up here in the uh, right hand corner. So first of all, I'm going to line this up vertically. I'm going to circle my numerators right here. If I'm doing 2 minus 1, more on the top, no need to stop. So 2 minus 1 is 1. My denominator stays the same. 3 minus 2 is also 1. So the difference, which, right, which is the answer to a subtraction problem, of 3 and 2 fourths and 2 and 1 fourths is 1 and 1 fourth. That's our steps. That's how easy it is. That It's exactly like adding mixed numbers, except we're subtracting them instead of adding them. Let's take a look at this we do problem. Make sure it's down in your notes, okay, if you have your notes in front of you. And if you've been with us, you probably already know how to do this. But what happens when we're doing a mixed number minus a fraction? Well, same thing. We're going to follow our steps. We're going to line up our whole numbers and fractions vertically. Except if you don't have a whole number right here, that's fine. You can just put a zero, right? Because if you don't have anything, you represent that with a zero. And I'm going to just subtract them, which means I need to circle my numerators. More on the top, no need to stop. So 5 minus 2 is 3. My denominator stays the same. And then 6 minus 0 would just be 6. So the answer to this is 6 and 
three, six. You could also simplify that if you wanted to, to six and one half. Again, if you don't know how to simplify, don't worry about it. That's not the point of this lesson. But for those who do, we always want you to take that extra step. So pretty easy, same exact steps, except you can just put a zero for your whole number if you don't have one. And I want to do one more we do problem with you uh, because a lot of people get confused by this um, type of problem right here. I'm going to line these up vertically. So I'm going to have 10 and 7 eighths minus 5 and 6 eighths. I'm going to circle my numerators. And again, the reason I circle them is just so I know which numbers I'm supposed to be subtracting. Uh, we know there's four different digits right here lined up, and it can be confusing if we don't take our time. And we think the hardest part about math is just being neat. So we want to make sure we circle those to make sure that we are subtracting the right numbers. 7 minus 6. More on the top, no need to stop. So 7 minus 6 is 1. My denominator stays the same. Now when you come over to your whole numbers, okay, you could either think about this as 10 minus 5 and use your number sense. Or if you are someone who takes it one place value at a time, that's fine. 0 minus 5 is not 0, though. Sometimes we get so caught up in the fractions, we forget our basic subtracting skills. Okay, so this is now just 10 minus 5. So either you could do 10 minus 5 is 5, or if you're doing the ones place first, okay, which is what we teach actually, especially when we have bigger numbers with more digits, 0 minus 5, I can't do that. So more on the floor, go next door. And because this is whole numbers, we're going to get 10 more, right? So that's going to become a 0. This would become a 10. And now I can do 10 minus 5. Again, you could have skipped that step because it's just 10 anyway, and you probably could have figured that out. But when you are subtracting your whole numbers, you subtract them just like normal, just like you always have your entire life, okay? We just see so many people get caught up in worrying about the fractions, then we mess up on the easy part, which is the whole numbers. So the difference for this is 5 and 1 8. So I wanted to show you that example. Let's take a look at a U-try problem. All right, your U-try problem, 6 and 2 twelfths minus 1 and 1 twelfths. Go ahead and pause the video. Solve it in your notes or on your piece of paper, wherever you're doing this work. When you're ready, push play to check your understanding. Hopefully, you just paused it and solved it. Now we're checking it. So step number one, I'm going to line up my whole numbers and fractions vertically. I'm going to circle my numerators. 2 minus 1 is 1. My denominator is going to stay the same. 6 minus 1 is 5. So the difference between 6 and 2 twelfths minus 1 and 1 twelfths is 5 and 1 twelfths. Hopefully you got that right. If not, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Go back, rewatch the video. You can check out our Subtracting Mixed Number song, which I'll put the card up here for you. Um, it's a great song, very catchy. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and comment and all of those things as well. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We hope this was helpful. Uh, we know there's lots of different options online, so we always appreciate you taking your time to ch check out our Instructor Beats videos. Please like, leave us a comment, let us know where you're watching from, and as always, please hit that subscribe button. Help us out. We really appreciate that. Join the Instructor Beats family. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.